Guys, when I did the overclocking competition for MSI and all the different components, I promised to do individual reviews of all the components. So wear your seatbelt for the next one because this little guy is fast. It is the Seagate FireCuda 530. Guys, welcome back. Hope you've been keeping well. A fire extinguisher on standby. Why? It is the Seagate FireQ 530 and it is blazingly fast, which I will show you in performance. It is the new NVMe PCIe 4 SSD that has been released by Seagate and it is and does live up to all the hype, which I will show you. So we're gonna be looking at its performance. We're gonna be looking at it a little bit closer. So I've got the one terabyte version without the heatsink. Why? Because I've got heatsinks in my computer. Don't really need it. Comes with the motherboard. But the heatsink version now is compatible with PS5. So do have a look at that if you are a PS5 enthusiast and want to grow your storage. So without any further ado, let's look at this guy a little bit closer and then we'll move on to performance. And lastly, we shall conclude. to test the FiQ to 530 and as we can see it is PCIe 4 and supported by PCIe 4. There's the temperature 100% health so we are good to go. So let's choose peak performance and let's give this guy a little bit of a whirl. Okay, so test done and how did it perform? It performed phenomenally, but let's look at how it performed in accordance with its specs. So let's look at the benchmarks. It promises 7,300 on all its versions except for the 500. I am on the one terabyte. So it has overperformed. It has gone to 7357, so 57.98 over what it promises there. On right, it promises 6,000, and I did 5852, so round about, what, 147.33, less than that. So nothing major there. This performance, again, by FireCuda is just insane. So as we can see, guys, the performance is phenomenal. It hits the benchmarks that it promises. Yes, it was a little bit slower on right, but eh, these things happen. Not too much of an issue. So really really impressed by the performance of this drive it does everything that it promises so let's move on to our conclusion okay guys conclusion time and it's kind of the same as when i did the 520 you're dealing with something and again this word comes out again future proofing but this is like future proofing like back to the future future proofing with a floating skateboard because 7600 megabytes per second and 6,000 megabytes per second, it's, it's insane. And the problem again is that your computer will never be able to use it unless it's for raw data transfer. However, why do people buy Ferraris? Why do people buy Lamborghinis? It's somehow, at least for me, you wanna know that you're putting the best into your PC. And again, with the 530, you are putting the best. The things that add to this are that it does have rescue service, three years included rescue service. And if you don't know what it is, I will put a link of uh, one of the videos where I describe rescue service. But basically, you know that if something happens to the drive, they will try and recover your data and it has a very, very high success rate and they will send you a replacement drive and then they'll send you the original back. So 
it's a really great service to have. It does have a five year warranty, but let's talk about price. So for the 500 gig, you're looking at about 2,000, just over 2,000 Rand, $139. Then for the one terabyte, you're looking at about 4,000, just over 4,000 Rand, maybe 4,500 depending on exchange, but $239. Then we have a two terabyte version. And that two terabyte version goes for $539. So we are now squeezing towards over the 8,000 Rand mark. Then lastly, we've got a four terabyte version, which is around about $949. And now we're starting to look at the 13, 14,000 Rand mark again, depending on exchange. So maybe over 14. And yes, these prices will definitely set you back. They are heavy prices to pay and you can get away with a lot cheaper. However, I don't know, there's just something about when it comes to gaming that you want to know that you have the best and putting this in your machine, you know that you've got that certainty, you've got that reliability. So that is a decision that one would need to make. There are price discrepancies or price changes between the normal version and the heatsink version. Obviously the heatsink version is a little bit more expensive and the reason for it somehow doesn't make sense because generally if you tr if from the 500 to the four terabytes you'd think that you're getting a cheaper price per megabyte but it doesn't work like that because on the higher end drives you actually find that it has higher read and write speed and you can go and check out all those stats or maybe i'll put it right here anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the review and if you do have any questions on this drive, please feel free to reach out to me on this video and I will answer any questions that you have. Have an awesome day, evening, morning, wherever you are. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.